Returnal is a genuinely fantastic game. It has an intriguing story, a strong character, fast-paced combat, stunning visuals, impressive scope in its level design, rock-solid performance, incredible haptic feedback on the DualSense controller, and I hate it so much. Did that go the way you thought it was gonna go? Nope. So please, don't buy it, at least not for $70. It's not worth that. I'm pretty comfortable saying that I don't really like roguelikes. At least that's what I thought. Then I played Hades. Huh? And Hades was fantastic. An amazing story, incredible art style, great music, and satisfying gameplay that was a challenge enough, but it was fair. It was a very enjoyable experience, and I can absolutely see why some people made it their game of the year. But Returnal? No. Returnal is equally exciting at first, and I'm sure many people love its challenge, and they are able to get through it, but I cannot. I can't do it. I can't even beat the first boss. And that frustration that usually accompanies these games is turning to anger. What? <sighs> okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. And there is a difference between frustration and anger. Frustration fuels the desire to continue. Anger leads somewhere else. And it brings me to the conclusion, I don't want to play it anymore. I don't have time to play a game that I suck at, and if I'm not advancing through the story and the game has no interest in helping me, why should I keep going? And you know what? That's fine. If you don't like a game, don't play it. Move on. The problem is, and this is actually the first time this problem has bothered me, this game cost $70. Now, I'm not saying that this game drained my bank account. I declare bankruptcy! But it ain't cheap. Though I'm sure if I did like this game, I'd say it's worth it. And I'll say again, I think Returnal is a great game. It's very well made. It has the most impressive use of the DualSense controller. Astro's Playroom was a nice tech demo, but this is the best practical implementation of what it can do, and it's impressive. You feel raindrops, every dash, every hit, every swipe. I feel all tingly inside. Should we stop? The adaptive triggers are essentially two buttons in one. It's great. Don't buy it. Don't buy it at $70. Wait for a sale. Help me, I'm poor. And it most definitely will be on sale soon because I think $70 is too much for most people. I struggle to think of what recent games would have been worth that. Maybe Red Dead Redemption 2? God of War, probably? End of list. There's not many. And I think that it reinforces a growing trend, one that recently hit Days Gone, a game I just happened to make a video of. Games that aren't supported at launch don't tend to get sequels, or the developers don't have the freedom to do what they want. And unless you absolutely love roguelikes, don't buy Returnal right now. And if you're not sure, go play Hades. It's better. Whoa, is my hair out? And from what I understand, Returnal isn't even a true roguelike anyway. They've added elements or taken some away. I don't know. I am in no position to be the arbiter of genre purity, especially for a game I don't care about. But this all signals a worrying state of play. The investment of gaming is getting steeper. Games are getting more expensive. That's a fact. But with that, it reiterates the need to support consumer-friendly endeavors, like Game Pass. MLB The Show 21 is a perfect example. It launched on PlayStation and for the first time, Xbox. On PS5, it was 70 bucks. On Xbox, it was on Game Pass, so 10 bucks a month. The risk of enjoying a new game is greatly reduced, especially if there are a hundred others to choose from if you don't like it. This also calls into question digital game returns. Remember back when you had to go to Best Buy and pick out a game, but if you didn't like it, you could return it? Pepperidge Farm remembers. But the world is going digital, and our physical game libraries are shrinking. Microsoft and Sony are both encouraging it too with their digital consoles. But their digital return policies are either spotty at best, like Xbox. Well, yes and no. Mostly no. Or simply non-existent, like PlayStation. Bummer. PlayStation's return policy literally says if you've just downloaded a game, you have voided your ability for a refund. And I understand the concept that they're trying to adhere to. They don't want people to play a game over a weekend, beat it, and then return it. That makes sense. But you can't tell me there isn't a way to determine how much of a game someone has played, mostly because that's already a thing. That's literally what achievements and trophies are. So why would it be impossible to implement a system where if you complete less than, say, 45% of a game, you can still be refunded? It shows that you don't like the game. Obviously, if you finish 80% of the game, it's too late. Without this, every new game is a roll of the dice. Aha, but what about game reviews? People can simply look at those, decide what they want to buy. Yeah, let's talk about game reviews. 
As that gamble gets riskier, more and more people are going to have to rely on game reviews to decide on what games to buy. That's correct. But that's not always a sure thing. Now, I'm in no way suggesting reviewers are being pressured to lie by publishers for better reviews. There's no evidence for that, really. But sometimes, publishers do manipulate the circumstances in order to secure better reviews. Look no further than Cyberpunk 2077. Upon release, Cyberpunk 2077 was given favorable reviews from many reputable outlets, noting a few bugs but an overall impressive game. The only problem was that CD Projekt Red only supplied reviewers with PC codes for the game, so those reviews were based on the game playing at its most optimal conditions, a souped-up testing PC. When it was released on consoles, people saw the reality CDPR tried to hide. No. be whatever I want. Namely, that Cyberpunk 2077 was a big steaming pile of shit. The game was so bad that it was removed from sale on the PlayStation Store. Both Sony and Microsoft have specific instructions on how to return it, and it is literally the first thing to pop up on both refund pages. This isn't the only manipulation by a developer either. When The Last of Us Part II was released, Naughty Dog had specific embargoes on what could be shown and specifically talked about. Shush. Assumedly because of the leaks that surrounded the game that they were being incredibly oversecure. So this is my concern. Not all games will so massively, publicly, and universally fail like Cyberpunk did. I tried to make ramen in the coffee pot and I broke everything. Not all reviews will be as sanctioned as The Last of Us. You didn't see anything, right? Most people who seek a return just didn't like the game. But they'll be out of luck. But for $70, it's harder to just shrug it off. Why would anyone buy a new game at launch, a game you didn't fully know, or one from a new series? It makes it less appealing to branch out and try something new. I don't know if I would have liked Returnal more if it were free on Game Pass. It certainly would have had a lower bar to hurdle, and easier to live up to its price of admission. But again, not supporting a game can be detrimental to a developer's future. It's a catch-22, and it's untenable. It makes me concerned about the potential of a tipping point when people stop buying individual games altogether at release price. Are only the massive AAA studios going to be able to survive if the majority of gamers are buying games at deeper and deeper discounts? Can smaller independent studios stay independent? These things concern me, but only time will tell. I want to reiterate that I do think Returnal is a good game. It is a great showcase of the power and ability of the PlayStation 5, and I think many people will, and do, like it. I just don't. And that's okay. You don't have to like every game you play. But you can still recognize its achievements. You can still admire its execution. You can still marvel at how the developers were able to design and implement complex systems to create an immersive and powerful experience. And Returnal certainly is a powerful experience. Probably. The first level is very powerful, but I'm sure the rest is, is just, just great. So if you love roguelikes, play Hades. Yes, the